14 number one songs. She has nine Grammys. She is Oscar nominated, an entrepreneur, a visionary. And this Sunday at the Apple Music Super Bowl 57 halftime show, the wait is over. It's been 2,190 days. Dude, Rihanna, we waited it's for It's been you. over six years since the nine-time Grammy winner Rihanna dropped her last album. Rihanna is who everybody is waiting for. where have you been? We've been impatiently waiting for the last time we got from Rihanna. The fans just predicted the end of Rihanna. And everybody has been done. Done, 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 done. Okay, from Apple Music Radio and the host of the Nadeska Show, please welcome our girl, Nadeska Alexis. Good morning, and thank you all so much for joining us here today. For the past few years, I've watched this press conference from home on the couch in my pajamas, so it's really nice to be here with you all in person. Uh, at Apple Music, we are very, very passionate about celebrating and supporting artists and about having meaningful conversations around music. So we are thrilled to be joining the NFL and Rock Nation to bring the Apple Music Super Bowl 57 halftime show to life. And of course, to see an icon make her long-awaited return to the stage. Today, we get to hear what this moment means to her directly from her. So please join me in welcoming Rihanna. Hello, hi everyone, how are you? Good morning, hey. come, come get comfy with me here. Okay. It's so nice to have you here. Thank you, it's my pleasure, it's my pleasure. Listen, I know you've been working really, really hard to get ready for this show and probably haven't gotten enough sleep, but you still look like you're glowing from within. Is that the Fenty highlighter? Or you're just excited to hang out with us this morning. The Fenty highlighter is definitely <laughs> helping today because I have yet to sleep. We were working at the venue all last night and I kind of just stayed there, ended up in a prep and somehow I'm here at a press conference right now. <laughs> Here and smiling at a press conference and you still have a long day ahead. You have rehearsals later. So, you know, going into a show like this, we all know you're gonna put on an incredible show and we're so excited. But at the end of the day, you're still a human, right? And you still need to get yourself mentally ready for this. So how do you prepare for a date like today? I listened to Needed Me about 100 times this morning and I felt good to go, but you probably have a better strategy. A day like today? And a day, a day like, like Sunday. Sunday. Now that's that's the the one. I mean, I've been so focused on the Super Bowl. I totally forgot that my birthday is coming up. I totally forgot about Valentine's I didn't Day. <laughs> I am just like Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl. So it's a lot of preparation, a lot of moving parts. And this week, this is the week that it it, it really is being tested. Everyone, we're, we're just tightening up everything. Everybody's dialing in, everybody's tuning up. And a lot of moving parts. I mean, it's literally like three to 400 people breaking the stage down and building it back up and getting it out in eight minutes. It's incredible, it's almost impossible. But if it's impossible, that means you could do it. <laughs> because you've always been that person who could do it. I don't know that I could do that in eight minutes, but we, um, we're excited to do the Super Bowl. We, we are. We've been working on it for a while, and every day it just gets closer and closer to the finished product, and today is a really big rehearsal, really important one, so that's gonna be crucial for Sunday. I'm excited to see that, and you know, I'm a big believer in timing, that some of the most special and magical moments in our lives, they they line up in a way that I think that we can't always anticipate and predict. It's like the universe knows. So I'm wondering for you, what does it feel like for this performance to land at this moment in your life and in your career? It feels like it could have only been now. Yeah. Um, I mean, when I first got the call to do it again this year, it, it, I was like, you sure? Like I'm, I'm, I'm three months postpartum. Like, should I be making major decisions like this right now? Like, I might regret this. 
But if when you become a mom, there's something that just happens where you feel like you could take on the world, you can do anything, and the Super Bowl is one of the biggest stages in the world. So as scary as that was, because I haven't been on stage in seven years, there's something exhilarating about the challenge of it all. And it's important for, for me to do this this year. It's important for representation. It's important for my son to see that. It is. It, you make taking on a new challenge look easy. And I know that it isn't because, again, you are a human being, but you've always seemed so brave and, you know, like one to take risks. And I actually want to share something with you because I think it's important for you to take a minute to reflect, which you probably haven't been able to do because you're so busy. So for anyone who doesn't know, a couple years ago, Rihanna released this beautiful coffee table book and you got to take a journey through her life. And my favorite part was an excerpt. It was from, I think, her grade school report card. Mm. So here's what her teacher wrote about her. Mm. She is sure of herself and displays a positive attitude. I still see that today. She's friendly. She takes a leading role in group activities. She expresses her ideas clearly and intelligently. And she's very relaxed in acting out ideas. We have seen you evolve over the, the years from your first album to becoming a mom and a businesswoman and a music powerhouse. But you still very much seem like that little girl in that report card. That was trippy to hear you read that out because I feel like you were kind of describing me right now, especially the relaxed part. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Caribbean thing. It really is. <laughs> yeah, it seems like your values haven't changed over time, although you've obviously grown in a lot of other ways. It's true. It's true. A lot of my core values um, have never left me. A lot of the lessons I've learned in my earliest years, I have never forgotten and I carry them throughout my life and, and my career. Your work ethic is definitely one of those things. <laughs> Thank you, know, you. You are immensely talented, but it takes a special kind of person to put in the work that you've done over the years. And I think we're gonna see that displayed you know, at the Apple Music Halftime Show on Sunday. So tell me what it was like actually putting this show together, starting with the set list. You went on this incredible run, I think from your first album up until a Unapologetic, where it seems like you never took a break, you never took some time off. So now that you're a few years removed from all of those songs, what was it like revisiting those to build a set list? The set list was the biggest challenge. That was the hardest, hardest part. Um, deciding how to maximize 13 minutes, but also celebrate. It, it, that's what this show is going to be. It's going to be a celebration of my catalog in, in the best way that we could have put it together. And you only have 13 minutes. That's the challenge. So you're trying to cram 17 years of work into 13 <laughs> minutes. So it's, it's difficult. But we, you know, some songs we had to lose because of that. And, and, and that's going to be OK. But I think we did a pretty good job at narrowing it down. Was there trial and error? You know, as you started rehearsals, were you running through set lists and re tweaking, realizing this didn't work in this moment? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. There, there are probably about 39 versions of the set list right now. Wow. Yeah. That's I think we're on to our 39th. I mean, <laughs> every little change counts. Mm -hmm. Whether I want, like, a guitar cut out, something muted, something added, or just put in a whole new song, or take out a whole song, like... Every time I make a change, something has to be updated, and <laughs> that's a new version. Well, like you mentioned earlier, there are a lot of moving parts to the show, a lot of people involved, but another thing I've always admired about you, it seems like you know the right moment to step in and take control. And I think that's challenging for women. We're always nervous sometimes, me personally, of coming off too controlling or too bossy, but sometimes you know in your gut what the right thing is for you. So how much have you been really getting into all of the details of putting the show together? I'm, I'm definitely not one that's worried about coming off too bossy. I've been bossy <laughs> all my life. Ever since I was a little girl, I promise <laughs> you this, like a hell of annoying too. But I, I, I know some people get irritated, but you know, the, it's writing on me, you know? There are a lot of people who are a part of this show and, and a, a, a huge part of the reason why this show is going to be 
as incredible as it is. And I couldn't have done it without them. But you know what? At the end of the day, if it flops or it flies, my name has to stand by that. And so I really get involved with every aspect of anything that I do, whether it's the Super Bowl, whether it's a makeup product, whether it's savage lingerie, like whatever I do, I'm that annoying girl who's gonna talk about everything. I wanna see the copy on the website. I wanna, I wanna name every lipstick that I make. Like I, I care about it, I love it, I love it. I really do. It all goes back to that little girl. I'm telling yeah. you from the report card. Little bossy big girl. It's really <laughs> amazing. <laughs> bossy in the Still best here. way possible. <laughs> and so another thing that goes into such a big performance in such a limited time is the physical stamina. Exhaustion is a real thing, right? But then that's something that you have to deal with and your breath control and dancing on stage and all of that, especially postpartum. I couldn't do it. Last year after I had my baby, it took me months to wear regular pants again. Ooh. This is one of those few occasions. So what has it been like physically getting yourself ready for this? Um, the physical challenge has definitely been immense for, for many reasons, of course. But um, I haven't done this in a, in a minute. That was first, first things first. So you're just running around for 13 minutes trying to put like a two hour set in 13 minutes and you're gonna see on Sunday it just it, from the time it starts it just never it just never ends and until it's like the very last second and that, I'm not saying too much but <laughs> it's it's a jam-packed show and it it takes a toll on your body it does you got this girl. Thank you. And you know, I'm Thank not gonna you. press you to reveal any details. I know we wanna keep that under wraps because you've been working so hard, but look, as a Caribbean woman coming from a tiny island like Grenada, you've always made me feel so represented. I've always loved seeing you back home in Barbados at Crop Over. So I'm wondering if you're hoping to incorporate any elements of Caribbean culture in the performance. I mean, that's a big part of why this is important for me to do this show representation, representing for immigrants, representing for my country, Barbados, representing for black women everywhere. I, I just, I think that's, that's really important. That's key for people to see the possibilities. And, I, and I'm honored to be here. I'm honored to be doing this this year. I can't wait to see it. And we're so excited to have you back in music. You know, of course we've missed you, but you have a whole human being now <laughs> to take care of. And I know it sounds like for you, work-life balance was not necessarily a thing because you always considered those the same. Mm -hmm. But is that different now having a child plus work? Yes, it's, it's very different. Um, it, the balance is, is almost impossible because no matter how you look at it, work is always something that's gonna rob you of time with your, your child. That's, that's the currency now, and that's, that's where it, 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 it goes, the magnitude of how much it, it weighs. When you make decisions on what you're gonna say yes to, it has to be worth it. Mm -hmm. And this is definitely a moment that's worth it for you, right? For me, like for, for you, sure. What is the cultural significance for you of performing at the Super Bowl halftime show? I mean, it's a long way from home, right? Yes. It's a long way from home. It's a beautiful journey that I'm on, and I could have never guessed that I would have made it here. So it's a celebration of that. I'm, I'm excited to do that, and I'm really excited to have Barbados on the Super Bowl stage. It's a big moment for the whole Caribbean. Look, <laughs> you have been a global superstar for a long time, but I need to say right now on the record, Caribbean woman, we claim you as ours. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You better. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, you've taken a few years off of music. You've been building the Fenty empire, which has been incredible to watch. But now that you're making that transition back to music, you also took some time to just live your life, to just take road trips, like things that you deserved after working so hard. So how was that period? And do you feel now refreshed and ready to get back to music? The pandemic kind of, in a weird way, forced me to slow down. Mm -hmm. And then when you, you have all these um, boundaries and restraints and rules and 
you have to stay home. You kind of get creative with with ways to stay enter entertained in a way. And road tripping was one of those things that I've always loved. I just usually road trip while I'm on tour. <laughs> That's that the road trip. Count, I know. So I've got to like feel the things I love about tour without having the the commitment of the show every single day. It was just nice to appreciate that time. I, I really enjoyed it, actually. You deserve it. You seem like a workaholic, so <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> I think you deserve some time off. And look, I'm not asking you any questions about when music is dropping. I don't want any problems with you <laughs> or with the Navy. But, you know, a couple years ago, you said that you were working on a project that uh, would be reggae-inspired. Those are your roots. And then also a project that would just kind of capture where you're going forward in this next chapter of your life. And when I talk about this with my friends, we would take anything. A classical album from Rihanna would also, <laughs> would also be fire. So I was wondering if you could just tell us a little bit about this chapter and, and how you're feeling musically in general. Musically, I'm feeling open. I'm feeling open to exploring, discovering, creating things that are new, things that are different, things that are off, weird, might not ever like make sense to <laughs> my fans, you know, the people that know the music that I put out, that I just want to play. I want to have fun. I want to have fun with music. You should have fun with the music and have fun on that Super Bowl stage on Sunday. You put in all of the work. You're ready. This is in your bones. And Thank now you. it's just important for you to go out and have a good time. So promise me that you'll have fun. I got you, girl. I promise. <laughs> that's, that's one of my main things. I promised myself that I would have fun. All right. That's great. And now... <laughs>